Hey loudspeaker fans, it's a beautiful late spring day here in Connecticut, so I went for a bike ride to think about impedance. I thought it might be helpful to talk about what impedance means in a transducer and how you can think about it as a guide in building systems with a transducer, a loudspeaker enclosure, and an amplifier to get maximum performance. What does riding my bike have to do with impedance? besides trying to keep up with Robert Scoville's insane physical fitness. Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a 15 NDL 88. It's a mid-base woofer designed for lightweight use for line arrays. I chose it because we make it in three different impedances. We make it in 4 ohm, 8 ohm, and 16 ohm. And these are the parts that make up a 15 NDL 88. There's the motor. This is the magnetic circuit that contains a permanent magnet on the inside and the magnetic gap where the voice coil sits, like this. The basket that the motor attaches to and holds the rest of the soft parts in place. And what we call the soft parts, the moving mass assembly. This is the part that does the work of the loudspeaker and moves and pushes the air and that sits right in the center of it all, like this. The reason I brought all these parts out is to show you the difference between a 4 ohm, 8 ohm, and 16 ohm woofer. And the difference is this voice coil. That's the only difference. We change to a 16 ohm or a 4 ohm coil, depending on which woofer you request, and everything else, every other part of the woofer, the magnetic assembly, the tinsel leads, the spider, the cone, they're all exactly the same. If the only difference is the voice coil between the four, eight, and 16 ohm version of this woofer, then let's look at the voice coils. This is a four ohm coil, and this is a 16 ohm coil, and you can see the only difference is uh, this one, the four ohm coil, has much thicker wire. And this one, the 16 ohm coil, uses pretty thin wire. Both have windings that are about uh, 21, 22 millimeters long. But in that space, the four ohm coil fits about 32 windings. And the 16 ohm coil has about twice as many windings. It's got like 64 windings in the same space. And the reason is the thickness of the wire. Uh, this is about 0.46 millimeters. And this is about 0.28 millimeters. So it's much thinner wire. There's a lot more of it, wound many more times. So it's a higher resistance and therefore a higher impedance. When I say impedance, what I mean is this graph here. Because if you measure one of these coils with a DC uh, ohm meter, a multimeter, you'll get around uh, 3.9 ohms. When you sweep this, because the system moves at every frequency, it has a different resistance, essentially. So when we say that it's an 8 ohm woofer, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, here's 10, 9, 8 ohms, drawing a line. And saying that's sort of the average. If you pick any specific point, it's not going to be exactly 8 ohms. But we don't listen to sine waves and we don't listen to DC for sure. So what you're counting on is that the music you listen to is going to have content over the usable bandwidth of the woofer, let's say from here to here, and the average impedance in that bandwidth is going to be about 8 ohms. All three of these 15 NDL 88s, regardless of impedance, had the same power handling, 1400 watts. The difference is how many volts you need to put in to get the same 1400 watts into the coil because you want to drive them to about their performance limit. And that's where we get back to riding my bike. My road bike has 22 forward gears. It's got 11 on the back and two on the front. So 11 times two, 22. And the reason it has so many gears is because I'm a human being, so I don't put out a lot of power and I can only spin my legs so fast. In that sense, I'm a lot like an amplifier. I use the gears on my bicycle to adjust the impedance between my output and the road. I can only spin my legs so quickly 
if I could spin my legs, uh, I don't know, a thousand times a minute, then I would need very few gears because I could simply spin as fast as I needed to and any gear would probably work. And if I could make an unlimited amount of power, I would also need very few gears because I wouldn't need the really low gears to go up hills. I need to choose the gear that lets me match how fast I can spin my legs to how fast I want to go on the road. And if I'm going up a hill, I want to spin my leg the same speed as if I'm on a flat, but I need to choose a lower gear to get the sort of impedance between my legs and the road up so that I can spin my legs fast still. When you're choosing loudspeaker impedance, you need to consider two things. How many volts do you need to put into the speaker to get it to its uh, power rating? In this case, 1400 watts. And for these three coils, that's three different numbers. It's 75 volts RMS for the four ohm, 106 volts RMS for the eight ohm. For the 16 ohm coil, you need 150 volts RMS or 212 volts peak to peak. And that's getting into a pretty big amplifier. The sort of amplifier that most people save for subwoofers, like say the PowerSoft X4L or some other bridged amplifier or very high output amplifier. The takeaway here is that the impedance of the voice coil in your transducer is sort of like the gear ratio between the output of your amplifier and trying to move air. You want to make sure that you select the right gear ratio so that your amplifier can reach 1400 watts before it runs out of volts. Which amplifier you choose is a matter of sort of how much you want to spend and whether you're looking for other advantages. If you have a 16 ohm coil, one of the things you can do is put lots of speakers on the same amplifier output. But don't forget, if you hang four speakers on one amplifier output, now the impedance of all four of those speakers is, let's say, four ohms, and the amplifier is now putting out, let's say, 10,000 watts. But each speaker is only receiving one quarter of that. It's getting 2,500 watts. In this case, plenty. But in the case of large subwoofers, it may not be an advantage to use higher impedance coils. Hopefully that helps you design higher performance loudspeaker systems and understand the trade-offs you're making between transducer selection and amplifier selection. Just make sure that you get the right gear ratio.